What's the difference between the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge and the Galaxy S7 Edge? Well, I'm glad you asked because I've been eager to make a video about that very subject. Both are very similar in the design department. In fact, to the untrained eye, you probably won't notice a difference besides the size of each device. The Galaxy S7 Edge features a larger 5.5 inch display, whereas the S6 Edge features a 5.1 inch display. What's different is the sides are curved on the front and the back of the S7 Edge, whereas only the front sides are curved on the S6 Edge. The subtle curved sides on the back really help the S7 Edge fit more comfortably in the hand in my opinion. The S6 Edge feels much more sharp and obtrusive in the hand. Remember how a large portion of the Android community was freaking out over the lack of micro SD card slot in the S6 and the S6 Edge last year? Well, Samsung has managed to include a micro SD card slot in the S7 and the S7 Edge. They've also added a much thicker, a much bigger battery inside the S7 Edge. Samsung has packed a much larger 3600 milliamp battery inside the device to help it reach five to six hours of screen on time. Uh, certainly enough for a full day of usage for the casual user. And this is what the improved specs and the software features. So both smartphones feature quad HD resolution displays. The S7 Edge just features a bigger display and some tweaked settings like improved brightness and contrast. Even the automatic dimming feature performs much better on the newer flagship Samsung smartphone. Technically, the S6 Edge features a sharper display with 577 pixels per inch versus 534 pixels per inch, but the difference I would say is minor. Now it's time to talk about TouchWiz. Good old TouchWiz. The very word can be enough to set some people off, but here's what I'll say. TouchWiz ran very well on the S6 and the S6 Edge, uh, much, much better than in previous Samsung flagships, and it runs even better on the S7 Edge. I would argue that it even looks better in that it looks more consistent. Icons are mostly round in shape in the latest TouchWiz OS, compared to an assortment of various shapes in the previous version. Also, some of the animations are further refined. Not a whole lot is different. The Android Marshmallow OS should reach older devices uh, soon, which should help the appearance of each OS look more or less identical. But what's powering the two devices differs a little bit. Depending on where you live, the S7 Edge will feature a Snapdragon 820 quad-core CPU or an Exynos 8890 octa-core processor, both with four gigabytes of RAM. The S6 Edge features an Exynos 7420 octa-core processor with three gigabytes of RAM. And after running each device through Geekbench 3, keep in mind my S7 Edge version is the Snapdragon 820 variant, the results really surprised me. The first time I ran the test, the S7 Edge was almost exactly twice as fast as the S6 Edge in terms of single core performance. However, this test shows the S6 Edge uh, with less than a thousand points behind the S7 Edge, uh, once again in terms of single core performance, coming in at 1481 compared to 2335. The multi-core performance score only shows a difference of three to 400 points. What this translates to in real world usage is two fast smartphones. Both perform very well. However, the S7 Edge performs slightly better overall as it features improved hardware and fresh software. Games and graphic intensive apps will run smoothest on the S7 Edge. But with that said, I've noticed both do compete actually very similarly. Apps open up nearly the same time on each device. Sometimes the S6 will open up apps faster, sometimes the S7 will. But with the latest Snapdragon and Exynos chip and an extra gig of RAM, it only makes sense for the S7 and the S7 Edge to be faster than their predecessors. The two biggest new features added to the S7 Edge have to do with the display. Go figure, right? The Edge menu that slides out from the side of the display has been improved to feature more apps and info as the menus are wider. There's also a new always-on display mode with the S7 Edge that can display the clock, the calendar, uh, or the image of your choice. It's pretty great. I wish there were more options, but it's better than nothing. Best of all, it doesn't take up too much battery life since it's an AMOLED display. The S6 Edge features a 16 megapixel camera sensor with an f1.9 aperture, while the S7 Edge features a 12 megapixel camera sensor with an f1.7 aperture. Both feature optical image stabilization. This is a classic case of megapixels do not equal quality. Granted, both of these sensors can capture excellent photos. The S7 Edge just takes it up a notch by offering superior low light photography and depth of field shots thanks to the lower f1.7 aperture. However, I've noticed the S6 Edge can capture more detailed images, but it's only really noticeable when you zoom in and crop images. Also, the dual pixel autofocus on the S7 Edge is much quicker than the autofocus on the S6 Edge. 
It's very seamless. There isn't much of a delay in focusing at all, which is uh, something to really consider. The quicker you can focus on a subject, the better. Uh, as for video quality though, it's a pretty similar story. The footage you see here is captured in 4K, which does not allow video stabilization, unfortunately. I find the quality to be very similar between the two, uh, with the slight edge going towards the S7 edge, as it does do better in low light and it features slightly better dynamic range, to the point where the sky and the subject can be more accurately exposed, while both retaining fairly high quality. Probably the coolest feature of the S7 Edge is its amphibian qualities. It features IP68 certification where its predecessor does not. What this means is that you can simply completely submerge the device in water up to a meter deep for more than 30 minutes and it'll be totally fine. What's even cooler is that there are no annoying flaps to protect the internals like we saw on the S5. The speaker performance is pretty bad on both devices, not only are the speakers located on the rear, but they aren't very crispy or loud. I would argue the S7 Edge is a bit louder, but I would argue it's even worse than the S6 Edge. It sounds distorted and muffled. It certainly doesn't deliver a very punchy, enjoyable experience. I would give both of these speakers a failing score, though I'd probably pick the S6 Edge speaker as superior. Not entirely sure if it's the waterproofing of the S7 Edge that has anything to do with its quality or not, but it's really not that great. Overall, I'm impressed with the S7 Edge. I was impressed with the S6 Edge. It was my favorite Samsung phone, but the battery life was ultimately what ruined it for me. With the larger battery in the S7 Edge, I can actually use it and enjoy it more. The micro SD card slot allows me to expand the storage, uh, something that I couldn't do from last year's model. The various all around improvements to the software, performance, and camera are also appreciated, but the IP68 certification is probably my favorite feature. It's the feature that really stands out to me. Now I've shown you what makes each device different, and in my opinion, the differences are worth the upgrade, especially if you like big smartphones. Now, I wanna hear your thoughts of each device in the comment below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if you're brand new. Let me know which device is your favorite in a comment below. As always, I'm BoHD from PhoneDag.com. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya.